Hi all, I'm Kitty and I'm here with a little or a little big tutorial for you guys. I would like to talk to you about how to start LPing. And I know there is a lot of or there are a lot of tutorials about this topic, but I always feel like they are not really complete or you have to watch a bunch of different videos from different people possibly to get all the information you need. And I'm trying to make it all easier for you so you can just come to this one video and you know figure out everything you need to know or at least most of everything okay so the goal of this video is going to be that you basically have a really good general overview of what you should do or need for well, LPing if you want to start LPing pretty much that simple and this is pretty much for any kind of person which means you can be a pro or a beginner or whatever you are probably most likely gonna find some stuff that you can still use for your benefit somehow or to improve okay so before I'm gonna tell you what kind of software or programs or whatever the hell you need I would like to start with something way more basic and by the way, if you have already heard about this or if you already know this stuff, feel free to use my index in the video description to skip to different parts because you don't need to hear the same thing 15 times, but I really want to cover the basics for people who have no idea whatsoever. So, first of all, you need to figure out how serious you want to be with this. I mean, some people want to basically make a living with this, some people... Um, want to just do it for fun, etc, etc. The reasons are all up to you. I can't tell you that one thing is better than the other, though it does really help if you have fun with what you're doing. Because if you don't have fun and you're just doing it for the money or whatever, it's gonna be one hell of a bad ride for you. Okay? You're gonna need Quite a bit of time depending on how you edit or how much you record and all that stuff. You're gonna need commitment, dedication, and of course, yeah, as I said, fun. If you don't have fun with it, don't do it. If you've never done this before, if you or if you would like to figure out if you would have fun, go ahead and try it. It's not like you're gonna lose much of anything unless you spend a lot of money on software that you're never gonna need anymore. But honestly, you have nothing to lose other than that, so go ahead and try it if you're not sure. Just go with it. So, what would you need from here on out? You would probably need a good name. Now, what does that mean, a good name? Well, basically, it is usually recommended that you don't have a name that is really, really complicated or long. You know, something like Super LP or Awesomeness 2015-61 or something. Nobody's gonna remember that. And it's just gonna be one hell of a tongue breaker. You also want to avoid, if you can, numbers. Random numbers anyway. If it's somehow part of your name and it makes sense, that's great. Especially if it helps you being unique. It's awesome, but if it's just random numbers, because for example, somebody already took awesome LP here and there's 200 other of those names, don't go for it. It's not a good idea. You also want to use something that people are eventually going to be able to spell and something that's going to, you know, stick to their minds. In my case, I used Fire Kitty. I could have gone with just Fire Kitty or something, but that just wouldn't have, you know, stood out really. So I. Decided to kind of change the spelling a little bit, but not too complicated, so people are going to be like, how the fudge do you spell that again? With a freaking Y and uh, God knows what else, and you know. So make sure you put some thought into your name, and that you especially pick something that represents you. Something you can identify with, because you're going to be stuck with that name for, well, for a while. I know there's Google Plus now, and you can change your name technically, but... I don't recommend changing your name, you know, in the middle, quote unquote, because people are already going to know you as name so and so. And if you change your name in the middle, that's just going to be confusing and hard for people, and you don't want that, okay? So, personally, what I did was if you want some help, anyways, I tried to think of a few things that really define me, and I wrote them down on a piece of paper. 
Yes, paper still exists. God. And I try to make combinations. In my case, I'm I'm a fire type, you know, from Zodiac and also in general, I like the element fire. Um, I behave like a kitty usually, or like an anime or something like that. <laughs> Even my friends tell me so. And I just wrote down a lot of stuff, like, like other things I like, like strawberries and moon, stars, where the hell. And then I just mixed and matched pretty much. And I tried around until I felt like that really describes me. That really gives people an idea of who I am. And this is how you do it pretty much. Now, this you can technically do anytime you want. However, I recommend that you do this early on. Because it's going to be way easier later. And so you can really make a really professional impression on people. And also a really good impression. And it's basically about your channel look. I know a lot of people don't really think about, you know, what kind of banner do you use? What kind of avatar? Uh, what do I put in my about section? You know, all that stuff. A lot of people don't give it a lot of thought. And that's too bad because... It's your first impression. Before people watch any of your videos or see any of your videos, usually, when you just go to your channel, that's the first thing they're going to see. The name and your channel. And you want to make a, a good, friendly, inviting, welcoming impression with that. So, I would definitely recommend that you invest a little bit of time into making a banner and picking a good avatar and all that stuff. What you want to look for is... Preferably, you want to use a copyright-free avatar, just so you never have any issues. Um, you can technically go with something that has copyright on it, but I'm just saying, if you really want to be on the safe side, period, um, then make up your own thing. Somehow, make your own character. There's a lot of free avatar makers on the internet, on DeviantArt. Um, or if you ever worked with RPG Maker, XP, for example, they have avatar makers. There's a lot of sites where you can do something like that and where you don't have to deal with copyright. Or you can always do what I did and draw it by yourself. There is going to be a tutorial on how to do that. It's not too hard, believe me. But it's, it's a really good investment. You can also always use clip art or vectors or something that are free of copyright, you know, royalty free and that stuff. So I would really recommend that. You want to do the same with your banner. You want to make make it somehow related to your channel. You can come up with a catchphrase for yourself or you can just put what I put, like my, my name and what exactly I'm doing. For example, I mentioned under my name that I make let's plays, that I make tutorials. You know, just give people kind of an idea what your channel is about, just on first glance. Don't write a whole freaking novel on there because people aren't going to read it, especially if, you know, they're coming from different platforms, they might just see parts of the banner. But, you know, just make, brand your channel, basically. It's a good idea to brand your channel and make yourself have a personality. Make Give your channel a personality, as weird as that sounds. You can always check my tutorial on how to make a banner. There's all the um, the templates that you need, so go nuts. It's going to be really easy. It really doesn't take a lot of time, especially if you have some sort of an idea. I would really recommend that you sit down and think about this. Again, start writing down stuff, like with the name. You know, things that you identify with, your favorite color, etc., etc. You also want to <laughs> think of... This this seems really redundant, but believe me, it's it's good. You also want to think about how you want to format your titles for the videos. Like, do you want to spell out Let's Play? Do you want to shorten it down? Do you want to use quotation marks for the game names? Do you want to use, I don't know, degree symbols or whatever? Just whatever you pick... Keep it consistent. Make sure it's consistent throughout your channel completely. And make sure that when people read your titles, that they know what's going on. So if you make, let's say, um, an update video, and you don't put update anywhere in any form, even short as a shortcut, like as an abbreviation, it's 
not not a good thing. Um, you want people if they look at the at your video title in a search page or whatever, you want people to know or to have at least an idea what this is going to be about, and don't use any fake information like you know just to get better views. Don't make your video titles. The newest E3 coverage or something, if you're just talking about, I don't know, a game from 20 years ago, whatever the hell. Just don't. It's it's not good. People are usually not appreciative of that, so you're just going to get issues with that. You also want to make sure you keep having playlists and you put every video in a playlist. Please, I've seen this so much, so often. People... Start making playlists in the beginning of their career, <laughs> and then they stop. And people have to really look through all the videos to find something, and that's obnoxious. You lose a lot of time, and it's gonna make them not want to come back because it's unorganized. Okay. And again, with your playlist, give them good titles and possibly even descriptions. Make sure. It makes sense. It makes sure people understand it. So even if you come up with an own series, for example, if you give a first look to new games and you want to call it something crazy like Fan Friday, I've heard that before from a friend, or Think Fast, I'm again taking an, an example from a friend of mine, then make sure you somehow put in brackets or somewhere that these are first impression videos because people who are not familiar with your channel and just subscribed are gonna be like, what the hell is this? You know? So think of your subscribers. Think of them and try to put yourself into their shoes to figure out, you know, how you should um what you should do with your channel basically. You might also want to look into social networks. You don't need social networking sites. To be um, a good let's player or to become a good let's player but it is usually very good to have at least a twitter because tweets can be easily spread and again retweeted because it's just little updates and you can sometimes also just give little blurbs like hey right now i'm playing game so and so just you know something that people that helps people to grasp your personality even more outside of what you offer them on your channel and that's always a good thing you want people to relate to you you want people to like you if you can help it somehow because then they're more likely to stay on your channel and they're not just gonna unsub making your friends is great because they're gonna support you on your channel and with your channel so all right so these are these are just a few ideas on what you want to do as for the about page, please don't put any subscriber milestones because this is something for you and not for the viewers. And that has nothing, like, no real use because your subscribers don't need or even want to know when you hit certain or what kind of milestones you fit. I mean, they can read. There's a, um, a little number in the top right corner there and people can read how many subscribers you have you don't need to make those weird subscriber milestone bars or check marks or whatever the hell some people have instead try to sum up your channel in i don't know two or three sentences and tell people what you're doing here what they can expect you don't have to put future lps or something if you want you can if you think it's gonna help real people in but don't just you know, spoil everything. And don't, And if you write something in there, keep in mind that you're going to have to do it. You can't just write it down and then take it out again because that looks kind of weird. Just as much as you shouldn't start a Let's Play and then break it off later on and either have it on your channel incomplete or incomplete or even delete it. Because that doesn't make a good impression on people. That's why I said earlier that you need time and commitment and dedication. Okay? If you're not sure about a game, if you're doing it blind or whatever, maybe you want to play it, you know, off cam first for, for a while to see if it's even your thing before you start LPing it. So you can be pretty sure at least, maybe not 100% sure, but pretty sure that you're going to go through with it. And even if you get completely turned off, you 
you still want to go with it. You still want to try having as much fun with it as you can. Because, you know, again, it's not good to have unfinished projects. If you have issues, let's say, you know, technical issues and you can't continue something for a while, that's different. But if it's just because, oh, you didn't know that the game, quote unquote, sucked, that's not good. That just shows people that you didn't do enough research. So try a game out before you do it and or go look at a let's play maybe to see, you know, how it's going to be. Just as a little tip here. <laughs>